let's do this for December 8th Friday slate um, we've got eight games interesting games too the seven o'clock set is loaded in uh, like implied totals and the the night games are pretty dreadful so you know we got a lot to look at and you know I'm running short on time to begin with as I usually am it's been a slow morning it's Friday though so it's a good morning um, <laughs> shout out to those that have pointed out <laughs> if you watch my recap video um, I, I called Russell Westbrook Russell Wilson twice so I'm an idiot I used to always wonder like you watch all like the talking head shows or like you know sports radio stuff and you hear people talk and call people the wrong names and you're like I, I can remember just screaming at the radio or the TV being like Whoa, how are you saying that dummy I don't even know I did that until it came out in the comments you just don't think of it you're thinking about so many different sports at one time. My wife has uh, Russell Wilson as her fantasy football quarterback, so I was looking at her team previously to recording. Must have just somehow got caught in my brain, and all of a sudden there I am just spouting out football players in a basketball video. Idiot. So, first up, we've got uh, Hornets and Bulls. Hornets have the seventh highest implied total, 106 points. Um, lots to talk about here for the Hornets, although I don't know how much we can really take advantage of in fantasy, at least from a FanDuel perspective. <clears throat> but Cody Zeller is out for an extended amount of time, and that would have meant fire up Frank Kaminsky. Frank Kaminsky is also out tonight. So it's going to be weird. Um, I don't think Johnny O'Brien is worth a, a look as a punt. But I think that you probably want to take a look at like MKG. And this is especially true for DK because their prices are better. But MKG and uh, Marvin Williams might get some additional run. Marvin Williams in particular, I think, could be in line for uh, a decent night. And at 3,900, um, that could really, you know, you could fit some crap in. But let's take a look first at their breakdown against the Bulls. I was all set to fire up Frank, and then I was like, oh yeah, Frank's hurt too. Okay, so first I gotta fix this formatting or I'm gonna go crazy. There we go. Um, so Campbell looks great. And like I said, I'm in, I'm 100% in for Marvin Williams. I might like him on FanDuel, but I definitely like him on DK. Um, I could see Batum, but probably not. So what do we need from Kemba? 43 for value. Just got there in the last one, put up the 50 burger before that. It's not like anybody on the, like, I mean, Chris Dunn is a good defender, but I don't think he's ready for Kemba yet. Um, I'm going to put Marvin Williams here. It's more of a DK play. I just, I hate going after guys like MKG that have, I, I mean, Marvin Williams is sort of the same, but his, with his salary, it's a little bit different, but I really don't like guys that get, or MKG is a really good example guys with low usage that also don't get a large percentage of their fantasy output from points so basically like you're betting on mkg to get rebounds and assist and hoping that he gets steals and blocks and it just feels so risky in a cash game 
and I feel like in an eight game set I'll I'll have other options at small forward, so I'm gonna ignore it for right now. I think another thing that I want to do is take a look at people's salaries and how they've moved. So Charlotte Batum's is down, so I will take a look at Batum. Now I see it all it's only down a hundred. Um Nobody else is worth taking a look at here. How much is Kemba's up? 500. That's a little scary. I don't see any reason to go after Dwight tonight. Um, you know, I don't think he's naturally going to get like a lot of extra run. It's kind of hard for him. He tends five. He needs like 40, or 39. Hasn't really been there. It wouldn't. It wouldn't shock me, but that's not where I want to be in cash. And then to the Bulls, which, you know, you might get one guy out of this, but I doubt it. They have a 97-point implied total. It is dead last on the day. Uh, it's, it's, I can't have, like, that's just not a good, this isn't a good spot for the Bulls. If one of these guys have, like, a very particularly good matchup, I can see it. Uh, Miritich is back tonight, so that changes sort of their front court deal. Um, okay, Justin Holiday and Denzel Valentine, I think, have to be looked at. Um, maybe just Justin Holiday. I'm a little nervous to see. Who, how many mi minutes Miritich plays and whose minutes are impacted. It could just be like, you know, Cristiano Felicio doesn't really get any burn or Zipser doesn't really get a lot of burn and they just funnel in Miritich on his own. Um, but I will take a look at Justin Holiday. He's at 5,500 on FanDuel. So he needs 27 for value. Um, he's got there one, two. Oop, I didn't change the filter. Do, 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 do. One, two, three, four. Four times in his last seven, including four out of his last five. So it's worth a look. Not somebody I'm going to go after immediately, but got to take the peek. I had to Detroit. Um, Pistons and Warriors. Pistons, 104.25 implied total. It's 10th on the night. Uh, no real news for the Pistons. Um, all of their guys' salaries should be pretty steady. Are there any big drops off for the Bulls? Yeah, holiday sal salary being down $400 is interesting. Same from Markinen. Denzel Valentine didn't move. Drummond, Harris, Reggie Jackson, Avery Bradley all up. Stanley Johnson down 300. Good to know. Um, I don't think that I'm going to like a lot here, but that's just off the top of my head. It's always scary to go against the Warriors. And for the Warriors, um, everyone should be playing that's sort of not long-term hurt. So Curry is out and McCaw is out. I don't think it opens up anything really, aside from the, you know, the bigger dudes. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at Tobias Harris. Uh, I don't really have any interest in Drummond. And I'll take a look at Reggie Jackson as well. So, and anybody on D on DK that's more interesting? I, uh, I mean, I think Stanley Johnson's in play on DK. Guard and forward eligibility, 3,700. Um, if he has the potential to, like, open things up for you. But Reggie Jackson is at 5,800. So he needs, we'll say, 30. He's done that two out of his last three, 
three out of his last five, four out of his last six. Um, it is interesting that there's no Steph. So I will take a look at Reggie Jackson. And then Tobias Harris, uh, 33. He's done it two out of his last three and three of seven. That's not my favorite play in the world. But it should be a relative, you know, they've got an okay implied total. Not somebody I'm locking in immediately. But, you know, when you get to those situations where you've got like 1400 or 14000 in salary and you've got three spots to fill, like, I like to have that sort of stuff already done for me. Now, Warriors. Um... 108.75 implied total. It's fourth on the night. They're four and a half point favorites in Detroit. Um, so Durant now up to 11,000. The uh, the free roll of Durant at 10K is officially over. He's now up what? Yeah, 1,100 since the last game. Steph dropped, which is interesting. Hopefully he stays down when he comes back. But Clay up 500. It'll be interesting to see what Draymond looks like here. I've said before, it, it's so important to pay attention to the trends of salaries because, generally speaking, if it's moving because of performance, I want to be on the opposite side of that. If it's moving because of playing time, that's the scary part. But if it's just because a guy had like three or four games where things aren't going well and the price is going down, I'm going to bet on the regression back to whatever my numbers are saying. Okay, so we're going to look at Durant. We're going to look at Clay, but not hard. And I'm going to look at Draymond pretty hard. So... Uh, no interest in Quinn Cook or Livingston. Um, you know, if you want to punt Quinn Cook in a GPP on DK, sure. But it's, I'm not, that's not where the bread gets buttered. Okay, Clay, 7,400. That's 37 fantasy points. He's done that three times in the last eight. Uh, not in the last three Probably sees Avery Bradley, so I'm going to stay away there. Durant needs 55. Put up 66 in the last one. <clears throat> but he is uh, by default in because he's Kevin Durant. And uh, because, because Steph is out. It's just that simple. 30. There's nothing that leads me to believe that he's a problem. He's just not necessarily a... Uh, this all fits perfectly type guy. <clears throat> and then Draymond needs 41. Price didn't move. Didn't play in the last one, but put up 56 the game before that. He's been at 40 plus in three of his last four. I like it. I like it. Um, now... Pacers, Cavs. These next two games, Pacers, Cavs, and Magic Nuggets are going to be whew, interesting in a fantasy sense. Lots of points. So, uh, Pacers, 107.5 implied total. It's sixth on the night. Um, Corey Joseph and Miles Turner, I believe, are both questionable. I have them both in, so everything should look relatively normal here. Uh, they're going up against the Cavs, whose defense blows. Oladipo's salary has gone down $100. Um, there's no way I'm taking him. I don't care what he puts out. Thad is up. Turner is up. Collison uh, down to 6000 which is interesting. I'd like to take a look at that. I'm hoping that uh, that fits well, because... 
I could see him having a really good night. So I'm definitely taking a look at Boyan and I'll take a look at Collison and that's probably it here. Um, Sabonis just doesn't get enough minutes to get me in the door. And I think Miles Turner could be interesting on DK. I'll say that much if he's playing. That's a pretty low salary. So, Boyan needs 24. He's done that in his last two, three out of his last five. Um, I think this is a good matchup for him. I feel like I run him out there a lot. I feel like his salary has gone up too. Was he at like 43? I think 45. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little scary, but, you know, it's small forward. There's only so many options. That's why Durant ends up looking good no matter what. This small forward sometimes sucks after the the big crew. Um, and then Collison, 6,000. So he needs 30. He did it in two out of his last three. One of those times very handily in 26 minutes. Only played 21 minutes in his last time out. Corey Joseph got extra burn. But that might not be the case for tonight. I'm going to look at him and, because I want to see where he pops up when I run the numbers. Um, but he's got a good matchup, so I, I, I can't just disregard him. I'm good on the rest of it. Then we'll head to Cleveland. Cleveland, 111 implied total. That is first on the night. Um, they are... Time to do bad math. Three and a half point favorites in Indiana. Um... I assume that LeBron James is going to be uh, an incredible play for tonight. I don't, I can't see a reason why he wouldn't be. Who guards him on the Pacers? Just in case you're curious, the answer is nobody. But, <laughs> I mean, nobody guards him anywhere. Yep, fits like a glove. So we're looking at Braun, we're looking at JR, we're looking at love i'm not looking at wade that's the farthest i'm gonna go and i do have tristan thompson in right now for 19 minutes um rumored to be back love's salary is down 200 jr's is up which sucks doesn't really matter um, so Braun, uh, we need 60. Hit it in the last one, missed it in the three previous, but no eggs. He's been there three times. Um, I'd be surprised if I don't have LeBron. But I haven't looked at the rest of this, so I don't know how it's going to shake out. But uh, that seems like a no-brainer for me. And then uh, just to check on Love, he needs 40. Um, he's been... 35 plus in his last five, three games over 40. Um, I don't see Tristan Thompson being a huge negative impact on the way that Love would be uh, playing. I think it's just going to shave off minutes from like Chetty Osman and, uh, you know, like a couple minutes less for Channing Fry, at least for tonight. So I do like Love. JR needs 22. Um, I think he looks good in a GPP, but not something I'm running out in cash. Now to the Magic. Um, 110 implied total at home. They are second on the night. They're one and a half point favorites um, against the Nuggets. And never Google Evan Fournier is out. I have, I'm assuming Jonathan Isaac is still out. Which kind of makes this weird. I'm short third or short ten minutes, and I felt like I forced it to get there. So I want to see some news after shoot around. But I think 
they ran big minutes to the starters in the last one out with Ross out. Now with Fournier out, I mean, they had Peyton play 40, Vooch play 40, Jonathan Simmons played 40, Aaron Gordon played 45. Is that right? That just seems wrong. Do I have bad data? I don't want to trick myself. Nope, he played 45 minutes. Holy shit. Okay, so they might have to get that sort of run. So we need to look at everybody, but everybody's salary on FanDuel is up. That matters, except for DJ Augustine. Well, his is up too, but... So we need to check and see who's going to be in play first before we... And by we, I mean me, before I dive into anything hard here. But... I think between the Pacers, Cavs, Magic, and Nuggets, you're going to need most of your lineup. Okay. I think Aaron Aflalo is a great punt in a GPP. I'm going to look at Gordon. 92. How much is he up? Holy balls. $900. There's pretty much no chance I end up there. I got to look at Jonathan Simmons. And Vooch. Vooch for sure. And Alfred Pay. I gotta look at everybody. <laughs> she fucking should have said that from the beginning. Uh, all right, Aaron Gordon needs 46, which is what he hit in the last time out in 45 minutes. I am fading Aaron Gordon. 9,200 is too much money. Jonathan Simmons is at 6,100, so he needs 30. What did he go up? 300. Okay, so that's a little bit more reasonable. I can't stop clicking on everything that isn't correct. He needs 30. Um, yeah, that's... I don't like that either. He's probably too expensive. Alfred Payton against the Nuggets. There's no deep point guard defense there. So, 8,100. He needs 40. Hasn't gotten there in his last four games, even in 40 minutes. Oh, yeah. Vooch needs 42. Which he did get there. He got there big in two of his last three. So, yeah, I think I think Vooch might be the center play so far tonight. Yeah, I think I'd rather have Vooch than Love. I want more of that team, but I don't see it right now. I, don't, I hope it doesn't pop when I run things because I don't want to have to dig in on this. Um, Alfred Payton looks really good on DK at 6,600. That's a much more reasonable spot for him. Then we go to the Nuggets. 108.5 implied total. It is fifth on the night. Um, I don't think there's any relevant Nuggets news. Probably gonna finally get off of the Gary Harris train. I think I'll look at Will Barton. Salary might have went down like a hundred bucks. Gary Harris is starting to get a little bit more expensive. I'm gonna take a look at Wilson Chandler. And I don't, that might be it. Trey Lyles on DK might be interesting, punt-wise. So, salary changes for Denver. Yeah, Will Barton went down 
300. That's good. Gary Harris now up to 6,900. Big time growth in the past week. Jamal up to 6,000. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot to not like. Wilson Chandler down to 4,500 is could be sneaky. So Barton needs 36. He's done that in three of his last four. Two of three since Jokic is out. I'm fine with looking at Will Barton. And then Wilson Chandler needs 22. Um, God, I hate Wilson Chandler. He played like shit at the beginning of the year, and I can't shake that. Man, for a game with the second highest total, I don't like anything there, and that scares me. I'm anxious to see how, like, Wilson Chandler is going to come up when I run the optimizer a lot. I think. I can't look any... Uh, right now I'm staying away from the Magic and Nuggets because I think the salaries are out of whack. So let's move on because I'm running on short on time and, uh, you know, the rest of these games are kind of crappy. Memphis. I, I got to look at Marcus Gasol, I guess, and Tyreek. But, oh, boy. 98 point implied total. That's 13th on the night out of 16. They're just, they're just bad. They're just not good. Who the hell do they play? Ah, bad copy. Ugh. Try that again. There we go. Okay, uh, 98 points. They are home, hosting the Raptors. Six-point underdogs. We're going to have to take a look at Marc Gasol. Just because, you know, Valanciunas and Jakob Pertl are not exactly barriers for me. And I'm going to look at Tyreek Evans and, I guess, Jermichael Green. But, again, not a focus for me. Gasol's salary now up to $8,600. Uh, it's only a $100 change. Tyreek went down 300 so that's fun. Jermichael Green down 100 so that's fun. Tyreek needs 37 for value. He's done that two of his last three handily I might add didn't in the last one um, I'm fine with that Jamichael Green needs 25 stinker in the last one but hit it in the two before that um, yeah I think that's reasonable as well well that's a steadier diet of Abaka, I would guess. So I'm going to pass on Jamichael Green. No, he should be in there. It's just not a focus. And then Gasol needs 43. 2 of 4. 3 of 8. 3 of 7. I'd rather have Vooch than uh, Gasol. So I'm going to pass. Raptors, like I said, 104 implied total. It's 11th. Um, their salaries are all pretty steady. That's a lot of yuck. But you always have to take a look to see, you know, who of the of Lowry and DeRozan is in play. They're such different players that normally a game is going to fit one or the other. And this one's a Lowry game. So let's take a look at Lowry, and I'll look take a look at Abaka, who seems to be getting some additional run. 
anything happen to their salaries. It'd be really cool if somebody went down, like, unexpectedly. Lowry down. $200. Love it. Surge down. 100 bucks. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I'm whispering. I don't know why. Um, Lowry needs 41. Watch keeps telling me to stand up, but how the hell am I supposed to do that? 41 in three. Uh, yeah. Kyle Lowry. Welcome. That look. Kyle Lowry might be one of my favorite plays right now. Mm -hmm. Who's going to guard him? Tyreek Evans? Andrew Harrison? Fucking Chalmers? Too old. Actually, Kyle Lowry's probably older than Mario Chalmers. I have no idea. I don't remember. All those guys blend together. Uh, no thanks on DeRozan. And Abaka, 25. Hit it in the last two been in the 20s in the last five games i'd be crazy if i didn't at least look at him then bucks and uh, mavs bucks 104.75 implied total it's ninth on the night you know we're looking at three guys here basically um Della Vadova probably back tonight just going to shave some minutes from other people. It shouldn't matter too much. Um, they are seven and a half point favorites at home against the Mavs. So we want to look at Giannis. Duh. 12.4. Yeah, LeBron is in just such a better spot than Giannis tonight. So I'm not even marking Giannis down. I won't be on him. I don't have to look any further. It's not like I'm going to fit them both. I'd rather have Durant, too. So we will look at Middleton, and we will look at Bledsoe. What have their salaries done? Middleton is up 100 and up 600 over the past couple days. Bledsoe is up 400. Neither of those two things excite me. Um, Bledsoe, 73, so he needs 36. He's done that four of his last seven, but only once in the last three. Um, I'm okay with it. I hope that it doesn't pop as much as I think it will. And then Middleton, 7,600, so that's 38. He's had some 40-pointers and some 20-pointers. It's up and down. Um, I'm going to pass on Middleton at 76. I'd rather have yeah, like I'd rather have Will Barton I think at 72 tonight or Tyreek at 75 even and then to the Mavs 97.25 implied total. It is 15th of 16 tonight. Um, no news for the Mavs, so all of their salaries should be relatively stagnant. This should be a, a full pass for me. You never know. Sometimes a game just like crazily fits Harrison Barnes or Wes Matthews or something, but everybody's salary is down. Barnes is down 200. Dennis Smith Jr. down 200. I rarely play Dirk, but he's down 100. Wes Matthews down. Nope, he's up. Wes Matthews is up. Okay. I will look at Dennis Smith Jr., 27 minutes. I have him for 25 point projection. It seems high, but he's hit it. He's in, been in the 20s, but that's just sort of like where he is. I don't see the upside there. 
So I'll pass. I don't want anybody else. So we'll move on. Pels and Kings. Right now I have uh, I have Anthony Davis in. Uh, obviously, if he is out, the entire scope of this changes. It also doesn't have a line. Um, I'm probably low on that. Let me refresh it. Let's say the line is five and a half and two fifteen. So I have the Pelicans one ten point two five second highest implied total. That is obviously subject to change because I'm making it up on my own. Um, there should be no surprise here to who's in play. We're looking at Drew Holiday. In this case, we're looking at Anthony Davis, and um, we're looking at Boogie. Kings are bad. Boogie revenge game. God, if AD is out, this Boogie revenge game narrative is going to be insane. He might be 140% owned. Uh, and the game fits him really well. I think that it fits Drew Holiday well. Uh, I don't think that it fits AD as well. So I'm going to comfortably ignore Anthony Davis. I don't like, I don't, he's just not the guy that I want to take coming back off of an injury. Particularly an injury to like his hip or whatever the hell it is. That's not like, oh, he broke his finger or something stupid. Like he could play four minutes and be like, shit, this hurts. So Drew is at 7,500. That's like 37. He's hit that. In the last two, over 30 in the three without AD. Um, his salary. He's up to 75, but not, not crazy. I don't think that's outlandish. Boogie at 12 is, whew, he's up another 700, which is not really appealing um, if AD is back. But there you had it. like he's gonna be crazy owned I think as he should be he needs 60 you know he's been he's been good in the last two played 40 minutes in the last one though so I don't want to have to get there and I think that I'll take centers otherwise but he looks really good other than that I don't need to I don't have anything that I need to look at here I guess Rondo needs 30 Three of his last four, easily over 30. Um, it's not much of a score, so the shot profile doesn't matter. Should be able to get to the rim against the Kings. So, yeah, I'm okay with Rondo. And then to the Kings themselves, I guess I have to look at Zebo, but I feel like if I take Zebo, that's how I get popped for chasing my mistakes from two nights ago. Okay, so yeah, Zebo needs a look. Um, so does Garrett Temple, probably. But yeah, it's pretty much just Zebo. He's at 6,700. Who knew Zebo was going to be the signing of the year for the Kings, if, if that's a thing. And I guess, you know, we'll still look at Jakar Sampson at 4,200. But I don't have a ton of uh, ton to go by there from a shot profile standpoint who zebo up 800 bucks and up 1400 and in, since two games ago that might be the i'm gonna get off that zebo train he needs 34 for value which obviously he did in the last one um and has done it in the last three um they've got 10475 implied total that's tied for eighth I think Zebo is in play on DK with the dual eligibility. But um I don't his salary is up too much. Now if AD is out, that would change things for me. I'd be more likely to use him. But if AD is in 
uh, I don't think Zebo's in for a big game against both of those guys. So I'm going to pass on everything from the Kings. Jakar Sampson is at uh, 42. He got there in the last one, 28 points in 33 minutes. It's small forward, so I have to take a look at him. But, you know, that's that's the last guy in the lineup tip shit. Finally, the last game, and the least important game on the slate, Spurs and Celtics. Great, It's a great game. I, I would want to watch it from a talent standpoint, but, whew, fantasy wasteland. Uh, Spurs, 99.5 implied total. They are two-point home favorites, and they are the 12th highest implied total. Um, Aldridge at 82 is popping off the page, so apparently I need to look at that shit. Salary is down a hundred bucks. He needs 41 for value. I'm pretty sure the Celtics give up like a boatload of mid-range shots, which I'm not sure if LaMarcus Aldridge has ever taken a shot anywhere other than the mid-range. So, dad, dad. Take a shot, pulled up the wrong team first. The old uh, strategy video drinking game at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, um, definitely going to be taking a look at Aldridge. He needs 40, right? I just want to look at it now. He can get there. He's going to pop a lot on my projection, or when I run this. Aldridge, there we go. Rudy Gay at 63. Has he? How much has he climbed? That's really all the answer. Okay, so nothing off the last one, which is all that mattered. Kawhi's supposed to be back in their next game. Um, Rudy Gay needs 31. Yeah, hit it in the past two. Got to look at him. And then for the Celtics, I'm assuming uh, Jalen Brown and Marcus Morris are going to both be back. Uh, they have a 97.5 implied total, 14th on the night. It's kind of hard to get excited about the Celtics team from a fantasy standpoint, although give it up for Al Horford. He's been having uh, an absolutely incredible season um, and, like, oddly under the radar. He's worth a look. I want to see his salary. So is So is Kyrie. Surprise, surprise. Kyrie needs 39. He gets to 40 pretty regularly. So I like it. Same for Horford, 72. So he needs 36. He's done that four straight. How much has his salary gone up in those last four? Because that's really the, the key takeaway. Because if it hasn't, that's what makes me like it. Down in salary. Oh, huh. Al Horford might be a trap. And, yeah, what's Kyrie's down? Kyrie down 1,100. Whew. Gets me excited. All right, that's it. That's it. That's it for everybody here. So let's, let's run the optimizer and see what spits out, um, you know, across the board. See if it lines up. I just want to give another shout out. Uh, came in last night during the live feed, but big ups to Pablo Melendez. I really, really appreciate uh, you being a patron. So we want all. We want five percent randomness. 50 lineups, filter out players less than eight. And boom. Ooh, that was a lot of D-weight at the start. Yeah, so Zebo still popping. Denzel Valentine. Okay, Justin Holiday. Interesting. AD. Uh, I'm not going to be comfortable with that. Eddie Jackson. Good.
Um, okay, so point guard. Reggie Jackson, Bledsoe, Kyrie. I have Bledsoe, Kyrie, Reggie Jackson. I'm sad to not see Kyle Lowry up there, though. Shooting guard. Justin Holiday, which makes me feel feel good. I won't be on Wade, but there's Tyreek. There's Drew. That makes me happy. Um, small forward. That's f crazy. No Braun, no Durant at all in those 50. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. They're all up 70% AD, which is just not going to happen. There's no way I'm running that out in cash, so I'd imagine that the Braun and Durant stuff would pop, and then Drummond as the big center for me. That's not what I expected, but Vooch coming in second, and that's a exactly where I would expect to be so just for sake of argument since I know for a fact I'm not going to use AD if I exclude AD and I well I won't lock in Vooch yet because of that but it's going to change everything I want to see where that goes I just can't trust AD in cash tonight and that's still not popping one of the big small forwards Did I? Are they in there? Yeah, they are. Holy shit. Uh, it's just more drumming. Gonna be a weird one tonight because I'm pretty much guaranteed to lock in one of Braun or Durant. Kind of makes me nervous. It's not even popping boogie, which is weird. <sighs> Gonna be a weird one. All right, that's it. I am super running late. Uh, like it if you like it, like it if you don't, uh, subscribe, follow me on the Twitter thing, become a patron, go to my website, I don't know which one I'm pointing at, um, all my stuff will be on the Reddit board, uh, I've mentioned before, I'm gonna be moving the projections off of the Google Sheet and onto, uh, tables on my website, I'll detail that more and have some walkthrough videos for it, um, like 99% sure I'm not going to do a live before lock. It's possible that I don't even play tonight. Um, it's going to be the only night that I have with the wife, really, over the course of like this week stretch with her being gone in Boston earlier this week. She's heading to Charlotte this weekend. Um, so I think tonight's just going to be a, a family night. But I will let everybody know on Twitter if that's going to change. Um, best of luck tonight, and I'll talk to you again later.